Hey everybody, Liam Clisham here for another C4DE versus Houdini showdown type video. If you missed it yesterday, I put out a response to MoGraph Plus's awesome Houdini versus C4DE uh, showdown that they did, just with some like quick tips to make it even faster to give a little bit more edge to Houdini and show that, hey, it, it can be even faster if you follow a couple other steps as well. And today I wanna show how you can make it even more faster with this awesome free plugin called MOPS or Motion Operators. Motion Operators are free tools plugin that you can put inside Houdini. It gives you a lot of the same functionality as the MoGraph tools inside of C4D. There's an instancer, there's fall off tools, and there's even other tools that really help with just general workflows that are kind of a pain in the ass to do otherwise. So I want to show the exact same setup or relatively close but using just like a handful of, of MOPS nodes. It's super fast. So inside of Houdini 18, all I've brought over is my color sop here, just cause I like the colors and want to keep that the same. But we're gonna start off by throwing a box, just like we had in the other one, and then a tube. And I'm gonna change this to a polygon, polygon good, and put our caps on there. Let's put these nice on our grid because, you know, OCD is fun. And first thing we're going to do is throw down a MOPS instancer. And this acts as essentially a cloner. And we can pipe these two objects in there. Go ahead and turn this on. You'll see everything is just kind of overlapping in here. And that's because it's taking these original sizes and scattering them. And we need to scale them down. So the way we can do that is under global transform. We can bring everything down to where we want it. I think that's too small. Let's try 0.05. All right, that's looking pretty good, but I want to distribute them a little bit more. So let's try and bring this down a little bit. Uh, let's see, that's getting a little too tight. Let's do 0.1, um, but these tubes are getting kinda too comfy with each other. So I'm gonna come in here under Instancer. And you'll see, if you look over here, we've got a path for our box, and then we've got a path for our tube, and we're gonna go ahead and open up these options. You can see there's a lot of stuff that we can do in here, whatever we wanna to do to these objects. And I'm just gonna reset these and go under Uniform Scale and just scale them down a little bit so they're not so comfy next to each other. Why don't we try like 0.65, that seems pretty decent. So that's looking all well and good. Some nice randomization there. However, in the other video, we had pretty, I guess, linear columns and rows going on. So the way we can change that up is under our indexing mode. Just come over here, set random, let's do ordered. And now we have these really nice ordered rows. But um, you can also change it up through so many other different methods. There's sorting here by changing your sort order, which what that does is rearranges the point numbers. So uh, if you want more random, or if you want to sort by X, Y, Z, a lot of stuff you can do in here. Um, if you've been using Houdini for a while, you're probably used to working with the sort SOP. And then under distribution, just to show you, there's more options too. There's linear, radial, spherical grid, which we saw a honeycomb. You can plug in a curve or a mesh. We're just gonna keep it to grid now, nice and simple. Um, so that is that, like no copy SOPs, no worrying about attributes or anything. We've got our objects in there just like we want. So the next thing I'm gonna do is throw down a fall off. And this is called a shape fall off. And the reason that is, is it takes on whatever shape you assign to it. So right in here, now you'll see it kind of looks like the linear fall off from Cinema 4D. That's because it is a linear fall off. And we can actually preview that in here. If I come down here, grab my gizmo, start sliding that around, you'll see that we've got some nice fall off happening in there. In our original video, in the MoGraph Plus video, they did a sphere. So let's go ahead and change that to sphere. And now we've got some fall off in there. That's looking pretty big though, so I'm gonna go ahead and bring that down. 
So everywhere that we see white is 100%, and everywhere we see blue goes down to zero, and we've got that nice tapered fall off. The other nice thing that we have built in in here is our ramp that we have seen in the other video. And we can also fit things to minimaxes, so you can see we can control our fall off a little bit more there. So this is the input minimax, this is the output, we can bring that down in there, and we can change this however we want. Let's go ahead and set this to cat mall. And maybe this comes up a little bit, comes down, up, down, bring this closer, maybe goes down a little bit more there, and there we go. So when we go to make our transformations where we scale everything and we get our nice p-scale fall off, this is gonna be that fall off there. And you can see it happening here. The other nice thing that is built in is you can add noise too. So yeah, we've got this remap feature, but what if you want to have like a little bit of random variation, excuse me, random variation in there? Just turn that on and then we get some noise attributes that we can start playing with. Add some randomization, bring down the roughness or up it, octaves in there. Um, I think for this purpose, I'm going to leave that off for now and maybe I'll come back and play with that later. So we're off to a good start. The next thing we are gonna do is throw in a transformation. Um, just to show you to all the things that are built in, if you come down to mops in the menu, you see all these fall off options here. You can do like audio, noise, uh, plane overall type of fall off. You can remap fall off, so you can use the spline, generators, explode things, subdivide, uh, sweep a spline, there's trails. Um, and then all these other modifiers too, where there's like a delay effector inside C40, there's a delay here, randomization, a spring modifier, just lots and lots of tools inside here. So what we're looking for is this transform modifier. We're gonna modify where these are, or the scale of these currently. We're not actually gonna move them on any plane, but uh, just the scale at the moment. So pipe this in here, turn that on, and you'll see nothing's happening, and that's just because we gotta make some adjustments. So first adjustment we're gonna do, just like in the other video, is we're gonna scale on Y. So right here's our Y, and just to make it stand out, I'm gonna go all the way up to 10 this time. But you'll see it's actually going in both directions. If you remember in the MoGraph Plus video, you have to reset your pivot point, and that we just need to move down 0.5 and the reason why it's 0.5 is because these are at their original one scale so just keep that in mind depending if you've done any manipulation to your objects beforehand you may have to change your pivot points and, and work on that a little bit beforehand but this has worked out so far for me just because it's a nice and simple scene so that's it except for the p scale fall off so this took a little work. I was asking in the Houdini Discord and on Slack and everything. And the one thing that I wasn't aware of is there's this do fall off, which adds in the data and kind of, for la la excuse me, lack of a better term, normalizes everything. We don't want that. We want to actually take this mops fall off attribute and use it down below. So you'll see here now it, it's kind of reacting poorly, but we're going to go in here and see this p-scale that's been turned off. I'm gonna enable that and use the mops fall off down here. Fall off. There we go. And now we get the exact same result that we had before, where everything outside of the fall off area scales down to zero, and we've got this nice taper here. And why don't we just go ahead and use our color so you see in here, under this attribute, I've got mops fall off. Turn that on. Now we've got our colors. So this looks like we could probably use a little bit more. So I think I'm gonna come in the instancer, start playing with, around with distribution again. Maybe I'll do fixed number instead, like, hmm, I don't know, 15 by 15. That seems pretty good. And then we'll tighten this up a bit, like so. There we go, got a lot more in there. And I personally like when there's a little bit more randomization. So for this, instead of ordered, I'm gonna do random, get that going. And maybe come back into our fall off and make some adjustments in here. Let's bring this down just a little bit, that inner radius, get a little bit more fall off. We can come into our remap, start tightening this up so the fall off is a little bit more gradual. 
things like that. And maybe we'll just add in some noise too. There we go. So look at that. Click off there and you can see now we've got our same scene all set up in, let's see, 10 minutes. And my recording yesterday was, was 20 minutes. So, you know, half the time, granted I was making some quick tips and explaining some things yesterday, but, you know, 10 minutes to do this kind of setup, not bad. Plus you can always add more to it, just like I pointed out in the other one. Um, what should we put in there? How about, I think I did a pyramid yesterday. So I'll do that again, just throw that in there. And I believe this one there, like so. Now we've got pyramids in there and we can probably bring our height down. And this is what I'm talking about. Now that I've messed with the height in here, uh, it actually messes up the transform down below. So I'm going to control that in the options here. And this should take care of that. There we go, that's better. Like so. So now we've got even more randomization with these shapes. And you could keep throwing other things in here too. We could even do a pig head. Let's toss the pig head in here. And it <laughs> looks a little bit gross and weird now. It gets a little bit squished and everything. But they're in there. And you could always readjust everything if, if you wanted to. So that's that. That is you know, another comparison. You can totally have a super speedy workflow inside of Houdini using mops and all the instancer and fall off tools that you're used to inside Cinema 4D built right into Houdini. Very awesome. Um, definitely worth picking up if you are starting to deep dive into Houdini. As I said yesterday and always, if you have any questions, concerns, comments, etc., go ahead and leave a comment below and let me know and I'll mend the video or put uh, something in the description to, to make things clear to the viewers. And also, if you like this, do me a favor, hit subscribe, hit like, do all that cool stuff that YouTube people say. And if you want to find me anywhere else, do a quick Google for 531 and I'll pop up wherever, social media, my website, etc. All right, everybody, thanks so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.